Hello and welcome back to chapter 11, reporting and analyzing shareholders' equity. This is learning objective two, record share transactions. To raise capital, the corporation sells ownership rights in the form of shares. Uh, as an aside, they could also raise debt. Um, however, a corporation, when it starts, at least has one share with one shareholder. Then in order to fund the operations, uh, it would either raise debt, raise equity, or raise both. This chapter, we'll be talking about uh, raising capital with the corporation selling ownership rights in the form of shares. Shares can be divided into different classes. The most common are common shares and preferred shares. Both of these common and preferred shares make up what we call share capital. And if we go back to the definition we just talked about, share capital, well, the corporation sells shares in order to raise capital to fund the goals of the organization, the corporation. All right, so it makes sense that they would come into this share capital. As an aside, in introductory accounting, we can say that shareholders' equity has two parts, share capital and retained earnings. You will learn later uh, in intermediate financial accounting that there's a bit more there, but for now, you're welcome to think of shareholders' equity as either share capital, stuff we raised from, with, uh, from outside of the company, and retained earnings money generated by the company that was retained in the corporation. All right, so the last bit, these shares are have ownership rights, and these are specified in the Articles of Incorporation uh, or in the bylaws. And so you have three characteristics that must exist in the Articles of Incorporation. And so if you have three, if you only have one share, and you would only have one share class, and that one share class would have to have each one of these um, aspects, rights in voting, dividends, and liquidation. However, you can have multiple share classes, and they may have one, two, or three of these attributes. But in totality, all of these attributes must be present in one or more of the share classes. You could have, there's no limit. You could have 100 share classes, you could have 1,000. Um, you just likely wouldn't want to deal with all that administration because people, it, it is just, it is a lot of paperwork um, to even have one share class and one corporation and even one shareholder. Okay, so just think about it. It doesn't like multiply, it like, it, it goes up exponentially. So very basically, you could have a small company and they may have one class of common shares, no preferred shares, and that one class could have, say, 100 shares in it, and they, those shares would have rights in voting, meaning those, that, that shareholder would basically be able to decide what, or pardon me, um, say it's 100 shares, uh, it's owned 51 um, by Barbara and 49 shares by Teresa. And uh, that means that Barbara would have control because every time they vote, um, she has 51 votes. Uh, and Whereas Teresa only has 49 votes. So that's kind of what the rights in voting. When you have a board of directors, that's when your shareholders appoint people to essentially steer the company for you. And uh, according to the Articles of Incorporation, perhaps the board is elected every year, every three years, every five years, et cetera. And if they aren't doing a good job, meaning the shareholders aren't happy, they can always fire the board and replace them. So um, you might not have a board. You might, um, as a shareholder, choose to be the director yourself and represent yourself. Up to you. All right, so that's voting. Uh, dividends. Dividends is gonna be learning objective number three. That is, how do we reward our awesome shareholders for their risk in the corporation. If this is a very small company um, and the people that are running the company are also the people that own the company, this might be you figuring out, okay, am I going to dividend myself out the profits or I'm gonna take it as salary? That's where we have some of that fun tax planning even at a small private company uh, level. And so dividends, uh, these are 
you know, a way of saying thank you either by cash uh, or other means. We'll talk more in learning objective three. Okay, and then liquidation. So these, this is otherwise known as right to assets. When you have a corporation, you have a series of obligations to other people. It is a legal entity, so it can enter into agreements. Uh, however, all of those agreements must be satisfied prior to closing down this organization. So for example, you are hmm, OpenAI and you are deciding in a month or two, it probably probably won't happen, but just say it does, that you are ready to wind up your business. Perhaps you can't sell it, nobody will buy it, and so instead you wind it up. You would first pay out all of your accounts payable, so any money outstanding that you owe. You would um, pay all your other debtors, um, so that might be people like banks um, or private investors. Then you would go down the kind of the order of operations for who gets paid out next, and that's preferred shareholders. Uh, preferred shareholders are like common shareholders, except um, they are preferred because of how their um, their arrangement is structured. They typically uh, paid. They typically get some interesting features uh, you'll see in uh, Intermediate Financial Accounting too. Uh, they might get some debt and equity options uh, within that share capital. Uh, they might not, and then they don't get like the risk and reward of the company, but they get a little bit more certainty and they get to be higher up in the order of operations should the company need to liquidate. Then at the end of the line are the common shareholders. The common shareholders get what's ever left over after a company uh, either dissolves or uh, or is purchased. So after, um, if it's like a, if it's a cash purchase, um, if it's a share purchase, really nothing happens. The shares just get purchased and the corporation continues on living. But if we're liquidating, that means the company is ceasing to exist. Everybody gets paid off. And then whatever is left after all the debts and preferred shareholders uh, get their money, then that gets divvied amongst the common shareholders. So the common shareholders uh, really do get the, the residual risks and rewards of the company. They are, after all, uh, the people that, um, that own the company. All right, so I'm going to talk a bit more about the common and the preferred shareholders on the next two slides. Most of what is examinable uh, aside, well, that is in your textbook, I will be highlighting here the key points. However, um, just understand the order of operations, uh, that liquidation is, is definitely one of those key things. All right. So when issuing share capital, this is going to be the amount um, that shareholders have paid uh, to the company for their shares. So when they invest, you know, if you are um, Samantha Taylor and you're investing in <laughs> uh, OpenAI, um, OpenAI would record uh, debit cash for my money and credit common shares, and they would issue me share certificates. So back in the day, share certificates were actually that giant pieces of paper. You could hang them on the wall. Now um, the share certificates are typically electronic and they are typically held um, by, oh, what are they called? There's something house, the, I don't wanna call it transaction house. Um, it's like a third party that um, holds on to all the shares and they register um, everybody's shares so that they kind of know, okay, cool, Sam Taylor has 100 shares as of um, November 19th, 2023. And if I were to ever sh uh, sell them, then they would remove me from the record. So it's a way in which once it's on, um, if they were purchased directly from the company for the first time, uh, they would debit cash, credit common shares, and then all subsequent uh, share transactions would happen um, on, by the exchange. And uh, then, you know, OpenAI wouldn't even know about me if I bought off the exchange uh, until it was time to do dividends, in which case they would see the date of record and that's who they would issue the dividends to. All right, so I put cash here. So these are the initial shares uh, purchased directly from the company for cash. Now, it might be something else. 
So say, for example, the company really wanted an airplane and you had a spare airplane hanging around and you really wanted equity, uh, you know, in the company, you could trade them an airplane. So it'd be debit, um, airplane fixed asset, credit common shares uh, for the fair value of that airplane. Uh, it could be, what else could it be? It could be a promissory note where you really want to invest in a company and for some reason they're willing to give you um, some common shares in exchange for a promissory note. Maybe they are gonna, you know, I don't know, charge you like a pretty high interest rate, like a 20% interest rate for 10 or 20 days because you there's a strategy involved and it's good for them, it's good for you to get the shares on record now. Uh, so it might be debit, um, promissory note receivable, and credit common shares. All right. Preferred shares. So again, in the order of operations for liquidations, preferred shares have priority over common shares. They have contractual provisions that give them this priority. Preferred shares typically do not have voting rights, though they could have some voting rights attached to them. And we would account for preferred shares the same way that we would account for common shares, debit cash or whatever was uh, given in exchange for these shares, credit comp preferred shares, pardon me. And so if they were 2,000 preferred shares and uh, they were purchased for $25 uh, per share, then we would debit cash $50,000 and we would credit preferred shares for $50,000. So regardless if we are in common shares or we are in preferred shares, both of those are gonna go to the equity side of our balance sheet in what is referred to as the share capital, you know, money that the company raised from outside of the organization. All right, let's look at an example. So please pause the screen uh, give this an attempt, and when you unpause it, uh, I'll be meeting you in Excel to do uh, this, this example. All right, talk soon. All right, welcome back. Let's do the share transactions first. All right, so on May 1st, our Meta Corporation incorporated and authorized 200,000 preferred shares and an unlimited number of common shares. All right. Uh, so that is not a financial transaction. Nothing was exchanged. However, uh, some lawyers and accountants did some lawyer and accounting things. And so an event happened that allows for future events that possibly are financial transactions to happen, but we have nothing to record for that first bullet point. However, May 2nd, stuff happened. All right, so on May 2nd, I wonder if I can do this without the comma, let's see. All right, mm, okay, I don't hate it. We'll leave it. All right, on May 2nd, they uh, issued 2,000 common shares for $15 per share. Uh, $15 per share implies cash because they didn't say airplane or loan, so we're gonna go with cash. And then it was for common shares. And so this was, let's see, it was 2,000 common shares at $15 per share, and while there are no marks for pretty, sometimes having extra zeros gets a little tricky, so we will just put that here and here. And we will say um, to uh, issuance of 2,000 um, common shares. Okay, perfect, let's keep on going. Then on June, hmm, June 15th, something else happened. What happened? Uh, another, oh, 200 preferred shares for $30 per share. All right, makes sense. Um, you know, oh, pardon me, June 15th, common shares for $17. My apologies. Oh, all right. So uh, anybody know what this means? When on May 2nd, they were selling for 15 and June 15th, they were selling for 17. Yeah, uh, Armada, Ar Armada is worth more, or at least it's perceived to be worth more by at least one external party. All right, so debit, cash, credit, common shares, so same journal entry uh, accounts as above, but we're gonna get some more money. Awesome, 1,000 
times 17, not minus. We're going to multiply that. All right. Issuance of how many here? 1,000 common shares. Awesome, awesome. Double check my math. Love it. All right. So I'm going to pause this. Come back, just wanted to give myself a little bit more room here. All right, and now we are on November 1st. This is what I got excited about before. We are having some preferred shares at $30. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean this company is being worth more. Um, between 15th and uh, November 1st, even though we went from 17 to 30, because preferred shares are like, they're like spicy common shares if you like spicy. You know, um, it's kind of like, I, you know, I like a little spice, uh, not a lot, but uh, a little. So this is kind of like pho with, uh, with uh, this is like saute pho, uh, aside from like just regular pho. All right, nothing wrong with regular pho. It does the job, it's necessary, but sometimes it's nice to sprinkle on some saute. And that's our preferred shares. Um, however, while it doesn't mean that it's gone up in value from 17 to 30, because you can't really compare the two. Uh, what you can say is it's indicative that it could be, um, especially because you would just need to know what the, the sweetener is here, or pardon me, the spicy uh, part is here. So what are they giving with those preferred shares? Are they giving um, like some conversion? Um, are they giving, you know, some additional voting? Like uh, what is there? It can literally be almost anything. So what is it? However, it's indicative that uh, the, the company is doing better. All right. Um, or <laughs> it's doing better uh, because somebody will pay $30. Uh, however, it could be argued that why does the company need to raise this money? It all depends. All right. But regardless, it's debit cash. It is now credit preferred shares. And we are going to take our 200 shares, preferred shares, times by $30 per share. And that's how much we're getting. And this is because on November 1st, there was an issuance of 200 preferred shares. Cool. All right, one more, uh, one more. On December 15th, additional 200 preferred shares were raised. All right, December 15th. This was, again, debit cash. Credit preferred shares for 35. All right, we can say that the company appears to be worth more now, um, assuming that the preferred shares, the you know the spiciness, the sweetness um, of the preferred shares versus common shares is the same um, so as the time that it was issued before. So these two preferred shares, assuming they are the same class, then it appears the company is being worth more, which is awesome. All right, so 200 more. At 35, and we have literally the same transaction except at a higher cost. Cool. All right, so that's A right here. What is our B answer? Well, B, we had authorized unlimited common shares. I'm going to say CS and issued. Let's see, 2,000, 1,000, 3,000 common shares. And so, yes, and then saying the same, um, what did we have for our uh, preferred shares? Let's see, uh, and I say PS instead of CS. Well, we had authorized 200,000 preferred shares, and we only issued 400 of those preferred shares. All right, so that is the answer to this question. Now I have a question for you, and I'll see you back in the slides for that. So in our last example, and thus far, we have been talking about the issuance or the selling of shares by the corporation to raise money. However, a corporation may repurchase their shares and specifically we'll talk about repurchasing of common shares. 
So I did a little TLDR here. Why the heck would they do that? Well, it is our friend strategy again. Um, strategy, what is the long-term outlook and how are they executing that strategy now? They may want to repurchase shares in order to distribute cash to the share owners. If you are like, well, what about learning objective three, Samantha? What about dividends? And I would say, well, that's cool, but dividends have tax. Dividends are going to have a tax consequence to the shareholders. And yeah, I mean, I would rather have, I don't know, $50 versus no dollars. But what I would really want is $80, right? So if I had to get $80, pay $30 tax, and be left with $50, eh, if my other option was $80 straight up, okay? So when you are a shareholder and you are purchasing common shares, you are doing so with your own after-tax cash. And so in order, when you sell your shares, and if you were to sell them to a third party or uh, they are repurchased by the company, you do not have to pay tax on what your cost basis, that is what you paid for those shares. So you can get your own cash back tax-free. Whereas if they dividended out and then went bankrupt, you would be paying cash and then losing your investment. So that would suck because you would be paying tax versus getting something back tax-free. So again, strategy. Um, maybe they want to increase trading on the security markets. So if they are repurchasing common shares, it could be signaling to the market, hey, hey, this company believes in their themselves. We're gonna, they're gonna use their own cash uh, to bolster. And when they use that to bolster, that reduces the number of shares that are issued and it could uh, create the market, um, you know, the whole supply and demand where the shares end up being worth more. You might want to get rid of a hostile shareholder. Uh, they might be the people that keep showing up to your annual general meeting, your AGM, and, you know, saying things like, I don't know, why are you using green bins? I do not like the green bins. I don't, I don't know. Like they could just be something like as a nuisance uh, or they could be something literally hostile where they are trying to take over the board of directors. They're trying to buy additional shares. They're trying to oust the CEO. Um, so, you know, who knows if back in the day when um, before Apple fired uh, Steve Jobs, if maybe uh, Steve Jobs could have arranged where uh, they could have purchased back some of the common shares, maybe um, found a strategy in order for him to keep his job. However, I would say that it turned out really well for him. And, um, you know, things tend to turn out good for good people. Um, that is my naive approach. Uh, it's like you put good into the world, uh, good will come back. Um, so again, strategy. And increase shares available. So this is a little counterintuitive. So this is if in the prior example, instead of issuing unlimited common shares, they had issued, say, a fixed number of 500,000. If you repurchase common shares from somebody, then that increases the number of shares that you could uh, make available to sell to future shareholders um, in the future, if possible, if that's part of your strategy and part that's necessary. All right, so when you repurchase the common shares, there it's literally the opposite. We are going to debit the common or the preferred shares and credit cash or credit whatever you as a corporation are giving out to um, repurchase those shares. We do have some complications. You will see a lot of those complications in intermediate financial accounting too. And honestly, this is kind of part of the fun of it um, is that the, you know, the quote complication. Uh, so it's not examinable here. Therefore, I will not uh, burden you with the additional learning because, you know, that's like the number one thing that students love, right? Is, hey, it's not on the test, but let's go down this rabbit hole because it's really interesting. Anyways, I will digress. You can um, click on my other videos if you're on YouTube uh, for Intermediate Financial Accounting too. We can look at that all day long. You can see me or my colleague in Intermediate Financial Accounting too. And for now, you can understand that the basis of this, whether or not you record a gain loss or you repurchase the shares as a company for exactly what you purchase them for, which is the scenario that we will be using in, in introductory financial accounting, you would reverse that original entry, um, credit cash, cash going out to buy the shares, 
debit those preferred or common shares. Now again, um, perhaps you didn't give cash to repurchase the shares, perhaps it was a loan, um, so it would be credit loan payable, perhaps it was, you know, changing the type of shares, so common for preferred, um, or perhaps you're giving them an asset. So whatever you are giving up in exchange would be the credit here. All right, you did great. We're just over, um, yeah, 25 minutes. Thank you so, so much for your time and attention, and I will see you in the next video.